Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to use while loops in C Sharp. Now, while loop is basically a programming structure that allows us to loop over a specific block of code while a certain condition is true. And basically, using while loops, we're able to keep doing something repeatedly while a condition is true. And this can come in handy in a bunch of situations, and loops are extremely useful in a programming language like C Sharp. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys how they work and how to use them. Basically just to give you a general introduction into while loops. So down here in my main method, I'm actually going to create one thing and this isn't gonna be the while loop. I'm just gonna create a variable. It's gonna be an int and I'm just gonna call it index and I'm gonna set it equal to one. And we're gonna end up using this index variable inside of our loop. So now I wanna create a while loop. So I'm just gonna say, while, and I'm gonna make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. Now here's how while loops work. Up here in these parentheses, I'm gonna specify a condition. So if you're familiar with if statements, you'll know that with an if statement, we have a condition, right? We check a condition. And if that condition's true, then we execute the code inside of the if statement. Pretty simple. It's the same concept with this while loop. Up here in this while loop, I'm gonna specify a condition. And if this condition's true, I'm gonna be able to execute all of the code that goes down here in these curly brackets. The only thing is with a while loop, not only are we gonna execute it one time, but we're gonna keep continuously executing it until the condition up here in these parentheses is false. So we're basically gonna check this condition. If it's true, we'll execute all the code inside of these curly brackets, and then we'll come up, we'll check the condition again. If it's still true, we'll come down and execute it again. So you're continuously looping through this code. So it's essentially an if statement, but you keep going until the condition is false. And over here in these parentheses, we need to specify our condition. So I'm gonna make a condition. I'm just gonna say while index is less than or equal to five. So as long as this index variable is less than or equal to five, I'm gonna keep executing all the code down here. And then down here, I'm basically just going to write a few lines of code. So I'm gonna say console dot right line and we're gonna print out the value of index and then down here I'm gonna increment the value of index so I'm gonna say index plus plus and remember this plus plus basically just adds one onto the index so essentially what's happening is every time we go through this loop I'm gonna print out the value of index then I'm gonna increment index and then I'm gonna go up back here and check the condition again so this is our basic while loop. I'm gonna run the while loop, we'll see what happens, and then I'm gonna explain exactly what happens so we can get a better idea of how this works. Let's go ahead and run the program. And you'll see over here, I'm printing out one through five. And maybe you expected that, maybe you didn't, but this is what we got. And I'm gonna go ahead and explain exactly how this happened step by step. So the first thing we did up here was we created this integer index and we set it equal to one, right? Now, then we created our while loop. So when C sharp goes to execute our program, it's first gonna create this variable index and it's gonna store one inside of there. Then the next thing it's gonna do is check this condition. So the first thing before it executes any of the code inside the loop, before it does anything else, it's gonna check this condition. So it's gonna check to see if index is less than or equal to five. Since index was equal to one initially, that's gonna be true. So then C sharp is gonna go down, it's gonna execute this line, so it's gonna print out index onto the console, as you can see over here. Then it's gonna increment index. So index is now gonna be equal to two. Then C sharp is gonna go all the way back up to this condition and check it again. So before C sharp is gonna execute that code a second time, it needs to check the condition again. So now index is equal to two, and two is less than or equal to five. So C sharp's gonna come down here, it's gonna print out two, as you can see right there and it's gonna increment index. Then it goes all the way back up and checks the condition again, right? So every single time we execute all that code, before it's gonna execute it again, it goes back up and checks the condition, all right? Eventually, we're gonna to get to a point where index is gonna be equal to five, and we printed out five over here. Then we're gonna increment it to six. C sharp's gonna come up here, and it's gonna check is six less than or equal to five, and then the condition's gonna be false, so we're gonna break out of the while loop, just like that. And that's essentially how we can use these while loops. So it's very simple, right? You specify a condition, and you're gonna keep looping through the loop as long as that condition is true. Easy enough. 
Now, I do want to warn you guys of something. There is a possibility of something called an infinite loop. And an infinite loop is a situation where this condition up here never becomes false. So for example, if I was to get rid of this index plus plus, now this condition up here, index less than or equal to five, this is always going to be true, right? Because we're never modifying the value of index. When we were incrementing it, eventually we would increment it enough to get to five. But since we're not incrementing it in anymore, we're just going to loop infinitely. So let me show you guys what happens when I do this. When I run my program, you'll see over here that I'm just constantly printing out one. I mean, this it's literally just printing out one as fast as it can. And it's going to do this forever if I let it. It'll do this infinitely because it's never told that it needs to stop. In other words, this condition up here is never false. And so that's why we have an infinite loop. And that's probably going to happen to you as you play around with loops. Everyone's had a, an infinite loop before. Um, and in most cases, you're going to want to avoid them. Although there are some special cases where you're actually going to want infinite loops. Um, so that's sort of the basics of while loops. It's very simple, right? We have a condition up here. As long as that condition's true, we're going to keep executing the code down here. And every single time we go through the loop, we check that condition again. I want to show you guys uh, one more thing. And there's actually another type of loop um, that we can use, which is similar to a while loop. It's called a do while loop. And in order for me to kind of illustrate what this is doing, I want to show you guys an example. So if I came up here and set index equal to six, let's talk about what's going to happen. So if index is equal to six, right? The first thing that my program does with this while loop is it checks this condition. So the first thing before it executes any of this code, before it's allowed to even touch that code, it checks this condition. So since index is equal to six and this condition is getting checked before we execute the code, this code is never going to execute because six is not less than or equal to five. This condition is false. So we're never going to execute this code. So if I run my program, you guys will see that nothing gets printed out, right? We don't execute any of the code inside that while loop, but there's actually another type of loop, which is essentially the opposite of a while loop. And I'm going to show you guys that. So I'm going to basically going to take this while loop um, declaration up here. I'm going to throw it down here and I want to make sure I put a semicolon after it. And then up here, instead of saying while I'm going to say do. And so now we have another type of loop, which is a do while loop. And the difference between a do while loop and a while loop is that a do while loop will execute the code inside of the loop before it checks the condition. So now, even though index is equal to six, we're still going to be able to execute this loop one time before we look at the condition, right? So it's basically going to execute all this code. Then it's going to look at the condition. It's going to figure out that it's false and it's going to go ahead and break out of this. So I'm going to show you guys how we can do this and I'm just going to run my program and you'll see that even though this condition was false, even though six is not less than or equal to five, we were still able to print it out one time because in a do while loop, you execute the code inside the loop first and then you check the condition. So that's basically another type of loop that we can use. And do while loops definitely come in handy and there's a lot of situations where you want to use them. Although I would say that by a huge majority, while loops are um, more useful, but do while loops are also awesome. So that's kind of the basics of while loops and do while loops. And this is really just the basics of looping in general. There's a lot of situations when we're programming where we're going to want to continually do the same thing until a certain condition is false. And that kind of gives you an overview of how it works. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.